All right, as Sub-Zero in D&D. First, you gotta start with the race, and we're gonna choose Human Variant. This allows us to choose a feat right away, and we're gonna choose Elemental Adept. Elemental Adept allows us to choose one particular element type. And then any creature that might have resistance to that type of element is automatically not resistant when you're doing that type of damage to it. And of course, you're a pretty icy character, so we're gonna choose the element cold. This also makes it so anytime you're dealing cold damage, if you would happen to roll a one on your damage dice, now it's at least a two. It's not a huge difference, but it is going to help a bit. Also from being a human variant, you get to choose one skill. So we're just going to grab perception because it's generally pretty helpful in almost every campaign. Then when it comes to a background, you are one of the ninjas of Mortal Kombat. And I'm going to take a hint from my Naruto builds and how they have ninjas of the Hidden Leaf Village or different areas and go with a faction agent. And you can really zone in on that faction that Sub-Zero is part of. This gives us skill proficiencies in Insight and Arcana. Then when it comes to our stats, we're going to min-max the crap out of this by maxing out our Dexterity, Constitution, and Wisdom. Then we get to put two points into two different scores thanks to our race, so we're going to choose Dexterity and Wisdom to boost up to 16. And with being an Ice Ninja and all the Dexterity and Wisdom that we have, it should be no surprise that we're going to take the starting class, Monk. Being a Monk gives you saving throws in Strength and Dexterity, and you get to choose two skills. So we're going to grab Stealth because you are a ninja. Ninjas need stealth. And then we're going to do acrobatics so that way you can get away from any grapple checks while still utilizing your high dexterity. Being a monk also gives you proficiency with short swords, which can come in handy, especially as Sub-Zero. At first level of monk, you get unarmored defense. So now your armor class equals 10 plus your dexterity modifier plus your wisdom modifier. Also at first level, you get martial arts, which is kind of one of the big reasons we chose a monk. So now you're even better with your unarmed strikes. Any unarmed strike you do deals a d4 of damage plus either your strength or dexterity modifier. That d4 upgrades as far as its dice size as you level up in Monk. The other benefit from martial arts is that whenever you use your attack action to attack with an unarmed strike or Monk weapon, you can automatically make one attack as a bonus action for free. Then at second level of Monk, you get access to Key. You have a number of Key points equal to your level in Monk, and you can spend those Key points on either Flurry of Blows. So now instead of attacking just once as a bonus action, you can attack twice. Alternatively, you can take Patient Defense, so you can take the Dodge action as a bonus bonus action on your turn. Or lastly, you can use Step of the Wind. So you can spend one key point to take the dash or disengage action as a bonus action, and your jump distance is doubled for the turn. Also at second level of Monk, you get unarmored movement. So now your movement speed is boosted by 10 feet. Then at third level of Monk, you get deflect missiles. So now if anybody shoots a projectile at you, especially if it happens to be Scorpion, maybe he's trying to get you to get over here. You can use the feature deflect missiles as a reaction. You can reduce any projectiles damage by one D10 plus your dexterity modifier plus your monk level. If that damage is reduced to zero, you can then catch that projectile as long as it's something catchable and throw it back at your enemy. Also at third level of monk, you get to choose what kind of monk you want to be and you are an ice ninja. So let's go ahead and lean into that by choosing the Way of the Ascendant Dragon. This immediately gives you the feature Draconic Disciple, which gives you three unique features. Draconic Presence, so you can re-roll any Intimidation or Persuasion check if you happen to fail them. Draconic Strike, so now whenever you strike with an unarmed attack, you can actually change that damage to some sort of element. This can be Acid, Cold, Lightning, Fire, or Poison, but of course, you're Sub-Zero, we're going to be leaning into Cold. And then the last option is Tongue of Dragon, so you learn how to speak Draconic. The other feature you get immediately when you choose this subclass is Breath of the Dragon. So you can project out whatever chosen element you have, which of course is going to be cold, and you can shoot it out in either a 20-foot cone or a 30-foot line that's 5 feet wide. Anybody that's in that area has to make a dexterity saving throw, or they wind up taking two rolls of your martial arts die worth of damage. If they manage to succeed on that saving throw, they do wind up taking half damage instead. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and if you use all of them before you finish a long rest, you can get one use back by spending two key points. Then at fourth level of Monk, you get slow fall, so you can reduce some damage from falling, and you get an ability score improvement. So we're going to lean into our Monk stuff and boost up our dexterity by two points. Then at fifth level of Monk, your unarmed strikes upgrade from a D to a d6 and you get the very important for any martial class extra attack 
So now you can attack twice as an action and twice as a bonus action if you use Flurry of Blows. The other feature you get at fifth level is Stunning Strike. So in Mortal Kombat, when you get somebody all woozy and dazed and get ready to finish him, you can use this feature to do that. Most of the time, I just got lazy and just did a full-blown uppercut because I thought it looked cool, but being stunned in general in D&D is a fairly powerful thing. It breaks concentration for spellcasters, it makes it so you have advantage on your attacks against them, and it completely destroys their action economy. Then at 6th level of Monk, your unarmored movement boosts from 10 feet to 15 feet. Your punches, even when they're not doing cold damage, are now just basic magic magical bludgeoning damage to overcome some resistances, and you also get another feature from your Way of the Ascendant Dragon called Wings Unfurled. So whenever you use this Step of the Wind feature, you can actually fly for the duration of your turn. You grow some wings and those wings disappear at the end of the turn. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. Then at 7th level of Monk, you get Evasion. So whenever you have to make a dexterity saving throw to avoid getting damaged by something, you automatically take half damage. And if you succeed on the saving throw, you take zero damage. Also at 7th level, you get the feature Stillness of Mind. So you can spend an action to remove any charmed or frightened effect on yourself. Then at 8th level of Monk, you get one more ability score improvement. So we're going to go ahead and just max out our dexterity really quickly. And then now it's time for a multi-class. And we need a bit more cold attacks because we are sub-zero. And we have that elemental adept feat that's kind of going to waste at this point. So we're going to multi-class into druid. When you become a druid, you get some spell casting. As far as cantrips, you're definitely going to want to grab shape water so that we can create some sort of ice block of water and of course you want frostbite because it's one of the only cold based cantrips that druids have I'm very surprised they don't have ray of frost but whatever one other cantrip i would make sure to grab though is shillelagh this allows you to take a basic stick and turn it into a magical weapon that you can use your wisdom modifier to attack with you can play this up as you making some sort of weapon out of ice then when it comes to the spells there's a ton that i would grab but I'm just gonna highlight some of the important ones. And at first level, you're gonna wanna grab Ice Knife because you're Sub-Zero, of course you want Ice Knife. This allows you to fling a shard of ice at somebody, dealing 1d10 damage if you wind up hitting them. And then even if you hit or miss, anybody within five feet of that point of impact has to make a dexterity saving throw. And if they fail, they take 2d6 cold damage. Then at second level of Druid, you get a wild shape, which we're not gonna mess with too much unless you wanna go with the beastality or whatever. And you get to choose what type of Druid you wanna be. Otherwise, known as the Druid Circle. And we're gonna choose the Druid Circle, Circle of the Land. This gives us one bonus cantrip. It also gives us natural recovery. So you can regain a little bit of your spell slots on a short rest. And you have to choose what type of Circle of the Land you're gonna be. And we're gonna choose the iciest one, of course, by going with the Arctic. This is gonna give us some bonus spells that are automatically added to our spell list. So we don't have to have them prepared. And they're gonna be mostly ice Based. And the first few spells of those are going to kick in at third level because that's when you get access to second level spell slots. So automatically you get hold person and spike growth. Hold person is perfect for freezing somebody in place at Sub-Zero, which is totally the move that I spam over and over again whenever I play Mortal Kombat. And you get spike growth, which you can think of as just spikes of ice sprouting up from the ground. Then at fourth level of Druid, you get another ability score improvement. So let's go ahead and boost up our wisdom by two points because that helps pretty much everything at this point. Then at fifth level of Druid, you get access to third level spell slots. Being an Arctic Circle of Land Druid, you automatically get Sleet Storm and Slow which both feel very spot on for Sub-Zero. Then at 6th level of Druid, you get another feature from your Circle of the Land called Landstride. And you can think of this as when Sub-Zero kind of skates along the surface of the ice, because now any non-magical terrain that would be considered difficult, you can move through normally. This feature also gives you advantage when you have to make a saving throw against any plants that are created to impede your movement, like with the spell Entangle. Then at 7th level of Druid, you get access to 4th level spell slots. So just in case Elemental Adept wasn't cutting it enough, I'm going to grab the spell Elemental Bane. This would also eradicate any resistance that your enemy has against a chosen element, but this can also boost up the elemental damage that somebody takes, boosting a chosen element by 2d6 damage. Think of it like Hunter's Mark or Hex, 
but a little bit amped up and more elemental focused. And also by being an arctic druid, you also get freedom of movement, so you can skate along that ice a little more easily, and you get ice storm just in case you didn't have enough icy stuff already. But one other one I would definitely grab is summon elemental. So that way you have some way to pull off that whole thing where you're kind of flipping out of a position and leaving an ice clone of yourself and that's kind of the way i think of playing this off then at eighth level of druid you get another ability score improvement so let's go ahead and max out that wisdom then at ninth level of druid you get access to fifth level spell slots this does automatically give us the spell commune with nature which i don't know how much that would play in but it more importantly gives us the spell cone of cold so we can blast out a bunch of cold damage. And one other spell I would tack on to the end of this is Conjure Elemental. Very similar to the Summon Elemental, but just a little different. It gives you a few select creatures to choose from with this ability, where Summon Elemental had more of a set stat block for you to use. Then at 10th level of Druid, you get another feature from your Circle of the Land, making you immune to being charmed or frightened by elemental creatures which feels oddly specific, but I guess it can help. And it also makes you immune to poison and disease. Then at 11th level of Druid, you get access to six level spell slots. And of course, you're Sub-Zero. So we're gonna grab the spell Investiture of Ice. This makes you immune to cold damage while being resistant to fire damage. You can move across any ice or snow without it being difficult terrain or reducing your movement in any way, while at the same time, the ground around you within 10 feet just becomes icy, making it difficult terrain for every Everybody except for you. And while you're concentrating on this, you can use an action to extend a 15 foot cone of freezing cold, dealing 4d6 cold damage on a failed constitution saving throw, and reducing their speed by half. If they wind up saving on that con save, then they wind up taking half damage and their speed is normal, but either way, you do some damage. Then for our last level, we'll jump to 12th level in Druid and get one more ability score improvement. But we're going to take a feat. We have an odd number in Constitution, and we have a few spells that we're going to want to concentrate on. So we can help that by taking the feat Resilient. This allows us to round out our Constitution by bringing it to 16, and at the same time, giving us proficiency in Constitution saving throws, which is what we need to concentrate on spells. That brings us to 20th level overall. If there's anything you do differently with this build, let me know in the comments down below. Or if there's any builds you want to see in the future, let me know down there as well. This build was actually recommended over on my Patreon, where I have access to all the character sheets and the spell lists and everything, as well as more votes and input that I try and get from my patrons on top of all the comments that I read through on the videos. So if you want access to the character sheets and all that stuff over on Patreon, feel free to check out my link down in the description, where you'd be just as awesome as some of these people or some of the especially awesome player character patrons, Krembro, Natron209, Johnny Dyer, Kevin Shirley, Zephyr, that funny man 57 joshua maynard cgc 2014 afstorm elisa martinez panda milkshake ted z andrew nobles carcat kitsune decker joint z13 viral nerevar daniel galvin and the dino 21 then there's the dungeon master level patrons i play dnd with shane gilroy daniel saffler conman zx cyber society zalvador devin happy and kilo kilo then going above and beyond anything i ever expected is my god tier level patron game stake he contributes an incredible amount that really helps support this this channel. So a very special thank you to him. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button. And if you like D&D related content, make sure to subscribe because apparently that makes it so you roll more nat 20s in your D&D sessions. But either way, I'll be here hoping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D session, especially if you want to play as Sub-Zero and fight in Mortal Kombat in Dungeons and Dragons.